look. No! Don't look. Did oh. you just peek? Hey everyone, welcome back. We are at it again. This is really heavy. So I think this is gonna be a, a huge, obviously a huge specimen because it's a bigger box. Let's see what I have today. Ooh, obsidian. My knowledge of obsidian is that it's um, kind of like a type of natural glass. I've seen it in a lot of different colors and patterns. I know you can find it in Westeros. I heard you can also find it in Minecraft. So we, we really have a, a, a tale of two fantasies right here with obsidian. Okay, can we open it now? Thanks. Everyone say hello to Snowflake Obsidian. It's really smooth, kind of some jagged parts. Extremely, extremely heavy. So what's really neat about this is the contrast of the stone. You have those light, you know, white spots with a dark black background, a great high polish. Some of them, it almost looks like they have a little, like, a, they almost look like flowers. Obsidian is made of silicon, oxygen, magnesium, and iron. We've talked about the most scale before, so it is about a five to five and a half on the most scale which means it's not as hard as a diamond, not as soft as tall. This isn't gonna just fall apart if I drop it. So what's interesting about obsidian is that it, it's kind of a big family. Snowflake obsidian is actually just one type of obsidian. And what I'm gonna do is grab a few more specimens and then we're gonna take a look and kind of compare and contrast. Here's my assistant, Keith bringing me some more specimens. So obsidian you can find anywhere that there's been volcanic activity because obsidian is actually lava that has cooled rapidly and it doesn't really have a crystal structure. We've talked about crystal systems in the past, monoclinic, orthorhombic, you know, that's, that's a certain way that the atoms kind of stack and it's unique to each stone. Obsidian doesn't have a crystal structure. The atoms kind of do whatever they want and that's a lot of that's because of how it was formed with that lava cooling very quickly. In the United States, you can find obsidian mostly in the American Southwest. So New Mexico, Utah, just to name a few places. But you can actually find this stone all over the world. Italy, Iceland, Mexico, Czech Republic, Japan, just to name a few. And what all those have in common is that at some point, there was volcanic activity. Okay, so name all of the active volcanoes in this country. What? Do you see where this gets a little hard sometimes with gemology? Yeah, no books, no phones. No, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> okay, so you can see all these are different colors. They're kind of, I mean, they look like four different complete gemstones. It's really um, kind of the gemstone that you're, you don't know what you're gonna get. It could be like the, the name your own mystery. What are, what are those books called? Name your own adventure? Choose, choose your own adventure. It's like the choose your own adventure of gemstone. You know, you stick your hand in a bag of obsidian and you really don't want, know what you're gonna get. This is called snowflake obsidian and I'm sure you can see why. It's cause these kind of look like little snowflakes. Those are actually cristobalite, so it's just small inclusions, and they, I've actually heard it described as flowering. You can kind of see that, that you see, there's a few, I'm trying to point those out, that they look like they have stems in the center and then petals on the outside. So this right here is called mahogany obsidian. You see these banding, or this banding right here, beautiful brown color, very, you know, it does look like mahogany wood. I don't know about you, but if I was hiking or out in the field, I would not think that this was behind that. Right here, this is called sheen obsidian. You can see that the light kind of dances across the stone. It's really soft and smooth right here, very cool to the touch. I think the snowflake obsidian is the coolest. You know, I think it's, it's kind of like so cool. Obsidian's like children. You can't have a favorite. That's not fair. This is my favorite. I wonder, do you think parents really do have favorite children? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, I'm the oldest, so I feel like my siblings are compared to me. No, my sister's the favorite because she's the funny one. See, the thing um, is, you guys can use all this against me, so I need to be careful. I mean, I don't think it really matters though. Look at how beautiful these are and how interesting it is. Whoever thought that this would come from Mother Nature and that this is actually the same thing as this. One of my favorite things about gemstones like obsidian is that it's not just for jewelry or decorative purposes. It actually has a real life use. It's been used for, you know, scalpels in the medical field, but actually obsidian has a much longer history. It was used back you know, as far as the Stone Age days for weapons or even cutting. I'm not surprised, it's extremely sharp. All right, so hey, let's take a closer look at what we have going on now. I want you all to pay super close attention to those white spots right there. Where did that little bugger go? It looks like a stem, it, it, almost like petals surrounding it. it. Looks like a field of flowers, but it's snowflake obsidian. So cool 
cool how ancient cultures back to the Stone Age days actually used obsidian as a tool or weapon. I think that's pretty neat and why it is one of my favorite gemstones. Hey, did you like obsidian today? What was your favorite thing that you learned? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. You don't wanna miss future episodes that we have coming just for you. Thanks, bye.